Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. Today, my guest is Barbara Hannah Grufferman, a native New Yorker. I had the opportunity to hear her speak in Nashville at a conference, and I knew I had to interview her, and thankfully, she said yes to being my guest today for Conversations with Nicole. She's amazing. She is a recognized expert on positive aging. She's the award-winning author of Love Your Age, The Small Step Solution to a Better, Longer, Happier Life. Her first book was The Best of Everything After 50, The Expert's Guide to Style, Sex, Health, Money, and More. She She's been a guest on the Today Show, CBS This Morning, live with Kelly and Ryan, Good Morning America, Dr. Phil, The Doctor Show, The Talk, and many more since launching her first book in 2010. She's a wealth of knowledge and travels the country sharing the importance of health, nutrition, career, fitness, sex, and many other topics related to positive and healthy aging. I really hope you enjoy today's conversation. Let's get started. And welcome to Conversations with Nicole. Today, my guest is Barbara Hannah Grufferman. She is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to living your best life after 50. As I mentioned earlier, I met her during a trip to Nashville and heard her speak. Barbara, you are the guru of all things of living your best life after 50. I'm so excited for my audience to hear your story. Oh, thank you so much, Nicole. What a wonderful introduction. And I have to say, I am living my best life. I really am. And at this I, point, I, I'm I, it's actually over 60. <laughs> I know, and you, but you do not look it. So that that's what we need to talk about is, first of all, tell folks a little bit about your story and how you came to being a true expert on positive and healthy living after 50 and now for you after 60. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a true advocate for living your best life after 50. And I really believe it's in our uh, control and, you know, with what we can control, not everything. Of course, we know that. I was um, very much involved in my career in magazine publishing um, when I was in my 20s and 30s. And then when I was in my 40s, I went over and I joined a company that was involved in international conferences. I was traveling around the world. And really, I feel like I've always lived my best life for whatever decade I happen to be in. Um, married, two daughters, they're both in their 20s at this point. And then when I was about 49, specifically, I started to feel Mm, hot flashes, um, kind of moody, a uh, little bit of brain fog thrown in for good measure. And um, and then I was like, when I was almost 50, so like this kind of went on for about a year or so. And I was walking my dog. I live in Manhattan in New York City. And I was walking my dog and you know, just a, a walk. I wasn't doing anything special, wasn't running or anything and fell and broke my arm. Now I shouldn't have, it wasn't a hard fall. So it was really shocking to me. Like I had, I like how in the world could that have happened? Long story short, of course, after I got it bandaged up, went to the urgent care and, uh, and the like about six months later, when I was still in this kind of like, oh my gosh, what's happening to my body? Is this the way it's going to be? Am I falling apart now that at that point I was over 50 and, um, had, you know, I passed my 50th birthday and I was really in a kind of bad spot. I was feeling not sexy anymore. Like, you know, wh where do I fit in the world? Um, can I still wear jeans? <laughs> Is my hair too long? It's shorter now. At that point, it was like a little below my shoulder. I didn't know what to think. Was I wearing the right makeup? I didn't know what to do. It was, I just wasn't ready is the point. I wasn't ready for the next stage of life. So then around that time, I went to my doctor for my annual physical. We discussed all of this. And then he said, what do you mean you broke your arm? You've got to go and get a bone density test. No one said that to me when I was getting all kind of wrapped up with my, my arm broken. And so I did. And that's when I got my first bone density test, which did show low bone density, also known as osteopenia. So which is also considered if unless you take action, 
which I'll talk about in a minute, you're on the fast track to osteoporosis, which is something everybody wants to avoid because that will definitely not help you to age better, which is now every what I focus on completely. So I had this new knowledge about my body, like, oh my gosh, my bones are weaker now than they were before I went through menopause. What is happening? And I must say at that point, I'm happy to say there's a lot of talk out there about menopause now, but at that point, there really wasn't. Menopause was still very much under the rug. It was embarrassing. It was taboo. It was something you just don't talk about. So therefore, so many of us had no real knowledge about it and how it was changing our bodies, our bones, that we now know our brains, our hearts. I mean, so much. I, like, what is a hot flash? We now know that hot flashes can have a major impact on your brain health and on your heart health. Did we know that? If we did, if, if the medical experts knew that, they sure weren't sharing it with with women. Right. So there was all of that going on. I just wanted to create the context for you. So I'm feeling like, I don't know. I mean, I was still traveling with my job and I just wasn't feeling like I understood what was going on with my body and where I fit in the world. So that was the context. Now, the New York City Marathon goes right past our apartment. In fact, the corner where I live happens to be mile 17 and a half. It's a 26.2 race, a, a marathon. We always know somebody who's running in it, a teacher, a friend, somebody. And we were all standing there. This is, this is 16 years ago. We were all standing there on the corner the day of the New York City Marathon. And that year, one of my, they were little girls at that point, one of them's the teacher was running in the marathon. So holding up a sign for the teacher and we're waiting for her to go by. And I'm looking at these people going by. And I was for the first time really paying attention to them. They were all different ages, all different sizes, different shapes, different abilities, different paces. They were all different, but they all had this mission to get to that finish line. It was impressive. And I was really focused on that. And all of a sudden, my youngest daughter <laughs> turned to me in front of everybody, my family, my friends, my neighbor, and said, Mom, I want to hold up a sign that says, Go, Mom, Go. Awesome. And then I, out of like who knows where in my brain, I, I heard the words coming out of my mouth. I said, I don't know how and I don't know when but okay, I'm going to do it. Now, please, everyone, keep in mind that I never ran except for the good humor truck when <laughs> I was growing up in Brooklyn. I wasn't a runner. In fact, I wasn't working out at all. I think I had done Jane Fonda for a while when it first came out because it was like the thing to do, but I wasn't doing anything seriously because women don't have time. Right. Nicole, do you have time? We, we don't have it. When you're raising kids and you're working, and traveling, which is what my position entailed, it was really hard to think about myself and what my body needed, what my mind needed. It was very hard. Unfortunately, so that don't turned think about me around, this. Nicole. That was no. the start of my story of being a major advocate for life after 50, right there, that day. It, it changed the trajectory for it your did you know, years to come for you. The marathon is an every year thing for you now. You're amazing as far as your health and sharing your wealth of knowledge about health and wellness with others. You've had award-winning books. Uh, you've been on major television shows to talk about, you know, your, your guide to style, sex, health, money, and more. <laughs> everything after 50. So, Talk about what people need to know to live that happy, healthy, productive life in our later years. 
Right. And, you know, what what caused me to even think about writing a book, because I'd never written a book and I was thinking, like, why should anybody listen to me? Was because when I had this aha moment and then I did start planning to run the marathon by walking first. This is really important. I didn't just like get up and run a marathon. It took a while to build up to it. I started walking, then added some running into it, and then walking, running, walking, running, running, running. It's strength training for my bone because I mentioned my low bone density. So I, you know, it took some time to build up to actually running in that marathon. But when I was, I had this aha moment, and then basically the aha was, I've got to take action. I can't just feel sorry for myself or put the proverbial blanket over my head, which is what so many women do. It's like, oh, this must be what, you know, getting older is. This must be what turning 50 feels like. And I'm just going to put that proverbial blanket over my head and stay there and stay on the path I'm on. That would have been a disaster for me. You know, I mean, who knows? Right now I could have osteoporosis. I don't know, but I took action. That is the point. I said, what can I control? And I will now learn how to control those things I can and get the advice from the best experts out there because there's so much information. We all know that. And, And use their advice. And you know what? And that's exactly what I did. So the, my first step was to let me get a book. I'll I'll look for a book that's going to be my guide when I wanted to kind of take control and be positive about aging. Positive. There was no such book. No book. That's the point. So I said, "What? That's crazy." It was all about anti-aging, how right. not to age, how to fight aging. So my really my number one goal for my mission is to encourage everyone to embrace your age. Don't fight your age, embrace your age, whatever the age is, and then just do everything right for yourself, whatever that age is. So that's that's number one. Like that, that is like the number one thing that everyone should really do. It's an attitude and it's a mindset. And so from there, I said, well, then I'm going to have to just write that book myself because I need that guide. (laughs) And if it's not there, I'm just going to have to write it myself. And, you know, I the, the second thing I would share with everyone is because this is so important at this age when we're feeling maybe not at our most confident, right? A lot of women feel invisible. Um, they, you know, you don't feel like, you know, you're attractive, um, with whatever you're feeling, it can really put a damper on your self-confidence. So I say, get rid of all of that and be fearless, be fearless. Don't let that, don't let fear, whatever is causing the fear to stop you from achieving that goals. And that goal, by the way, could be anything from, you know, changing jobs, starting a company, um, going into relationship, leaving a relationship, whatever it is, don't let your fear stop you or your, your lack of confidence stop you. Look at all the wisdom and knowledge and experience that we have built up of running a family possibly running a company and a family, you know, we have so much to offer ourselves and to also offer the world. So never forget that. Get that though. As they we, do. We, we start to think we don't have value. We can't really contribute when it couldn't be the more complete opposite of that. What you just said, we don't need to be fearing that we're getting older. We need to embrace it and say, here's what I've learned let me help you. Right. And the good news, really, really good news. And it makes me so, so happy is that while back when I wrote my first book and I had the great fortune of launching on the Today Show and Curry did an interview with me because there was no such book out there about how to embrace your age and be positive about your age and just like do all of these things that you can control. As I mentioned, there wasn't anything. So it did get a lot of attention. And yeah, it was on all the morning talk shows and then, you know, continued to be. But um, 
it was uh, just such an incredible time. And But I was a lone voice in the wilderness at that time. But now there's so much more about positive aging, pro-aging, talking about menopause very openly, um, women helping women, women supporting women, women encouraging women. And it's, it's a really, it's a wonderful thing. And it makes me really very, very happy. It, well, thankfully, you, you wrote the book. You were a pioneer in, in all of this and leading the yeah. way. So, yeah, yeah, and I'm, pr I'm very proud of that. That is a, is a very proud thing for me to feel that I, I think I really did help. I mean, you know, people who I'm connected to on social media and the like, or those I've met in person when I'm giving a talk and, you know, they are motivated because I'm just a normal person. I'm not a celebrity or anything special. I'm a normal woman who worked, had a husband, you had kids, have a dog, you know, had my share of, of you know, loss and end opportunity. I'm a normal person and I have just figured out how to kind of simplify so many of these things because it can get overwhelming when you start to think, well, what should I be doing? What should I be doing about, you know, my brain or my heart or my, you know, my health, my bones, but, or, you know, if we're talking about health and wellness and it can get overwhelming. And the last thing I want to do is to have any woman feel overwhelmed by trying to, you know, take action, right? And control those things that they can um, and then don't do anything at all because they feel so overwhelmed by it. Absolutely. So how so, do you I really try to simplify a lot of things. So give some tips on how you help women to over overcome being overwhelmed. So they, they will take action. They will go to the doctor. They will get the bone density and, and do the things so they have better health and can enjoy this time in their life. Yeah. The number one thing uh, for sure. And I say this over and over and over again. And Nicole, you've heard me say it when you were at the talk I gave in Nashville is that all roads lead to fitness. All roads lead to moving your body. You don't have to excel at a sport. You don't even have to play a sport. You certainly don't have to run marathons. That happens to be a passion of mine now. But you may not even like to run at all, let alone run a marathon. But you have to find ways Movement. that will bring you joy and as you move your body more throughout the day, there's too much science behind all of this. There's too much science that proves that moving your body throughout the day does a multitude, uh, gives you a multitude of benefits health-wise with your heart, with your brain, even with your skin, and but also how you feel emotionally with your mood it also helps with your weight management. I mean, you know, it just goes, there's too many benefits to ignore how all roads lead to fitness. And when you feel good, here's the key. When you feel good and when you maybe even look a little better, maybe you put on some postmenopausal pants, so common was yeah. for me too. I had put on postmenopausal pants. So many of us do. And then when I started to feel better because I was moving more and, you know, and I had a goal, I had running a marathon or, you know, even a 5K, which Nicole, I know you did recently. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you know, whatever your goal is and you even, you feel better, but you might even look better. And if you look better and feel better, it's just, everything is better. So true. And it boost your confidence. It's a confidence. Right? And the good news too this is always something that's amazing to me, but also really important for you to hear because I don't want you to get overwhelmed. What is good for your brain is also good for your heart, is also good for your mood, is also good for your weight management, as I said, like, and your bones, you know, a little cardio and some strength training and some balance. Three things, balance, right? strength training, cardio. And that's well, I mean, that's not overwhelming everyone, right? Nope. <laughs> no, it's not. It's easy. And there are easy ways to achieve those three things. I like that. What else? Get moving, fitness, 
Oh, get moving. And also, you know, really focus on eating better. I think that the vast majority of Americans, I don't want to be a nag about it, really aren't eating as well as we could um, because really processed foods are so uh, relatively cheap and easy to get. Uh, fast foods are so cheap and easy to get. But I think in this case, you really, I encourage everyone to really make an effort because it all ties back into the other one about moving your body more. They work hand in hand for sure. Just eating better, make good choices, eat more vegetables, more colors, fruit, more fiber. (laughs) Right. We talked about that a little bit. Talk about the six prunes. You said eat six prunes a day when we were just speaking. I, I had a 102 year old doctor. She's actually considered the uh, mother of, um, uh, oh God, I'm having a mind blank. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm way past menopause, but I still get brain fog. So <laughs> just so you know, um, but she is incredible. And she came out with a book in May. And so I was lucky enough to have her on the show the day the book launched. It was wonderful. And it became a bestseller, a New York Times bestseller, which is really fabulous. And, but she's 102. Think about that. And she was talking about a lot of different things and a lot of things that she has done with her, um, how she moves her body and kept her mind vital and active and what she eats. And the number one thing that really stuck with me was that she eats six prunes every day and she's 102 and just wrote the book. (laughs) And, and, I love that when I, I heard you speak, you talked about cold plunging and, and doing some things that are a little that a lot of people aren't familiar with, maybe. Yeah, that's really a great thing. I was actually on live with uh, Kelly and Ryan when Ryan Seacrest was still on the show just a couple of years ago um, when my, my other book uh, came out and uh, just talking about some tips to help you feel better and kind of like just live your best life, like easy tips that you really can do that aren't overwhelming. And one of them happened to be plunging your face or placing, it doesn't have to be plunging into a bowl of icy cold water. And as a turn, and we, Ryan Seacrest did it, which was really pretty fun. But um, the benefit is that it's anti-inflammatory and you, I'm sure have all heard about the ice baths or icy cold showers. And those are pretty hard to do. But if you just put your face and hold it down there for like 30 seconds and maybe do it a few times, it actually, you get about 75% of the benefits um, with blood vessel constriction and just anti-inflammatory, calming everything down. And you also then get this nice, pretty little glowing skin. (laughs) You can tolerate it. I've I've tried to at least start it, shared with you earlier, you know, splashing really cold water on my face, at least to do that. So uh, I am trying to implement some of the things that, that you've shared, because I just think you are truly a wealth of knowledge. You are an expert on living your best life, being healthy, you know, after menopause, and you continue to ch- share the importance of, of health, nutrition, um, all of that fitness, and, and so much more, because we can live our best life now, at 50 plus, it's not all over after you go through menopause. And unfortunately, some people still think that, but I do think as you have really laid the foundation for us that life can really just begin in so many ways. It's really up to here in your mind, what you want to do. Absolutely. And for also for anyone listening in who is going through menopause, oh my gosh, no one has to suffer at this point. You know, there was a big study that came out, Nicole, I'm sure you're familiar with it in 2002, and it was about hormone therapy. And the study had statistics that were just not um, analyzed correctly as, uh, as it was later shown. Um, and it, Basically, the news media picked up on this study that came out and said, oh, hormone therapy causes an increase in breast cancer and a lot of other very scary things like that. So, of course, immediately doctors stop prescribing HT and women stop taking HT. And so we have like this whole generation of women who have low bone density, (laughs) 
because hormone therapy, you need estrogen. It's all about estrogen. And when you go through menopause, your estrogen levels are fluctuating. And then when you're postmenopausal, you know, really over that period, you haven't had a period right. in 12 months, then your estrogen levels are at the lowest and that's where they'll stay. But if you've been able to replenish with hormone therapy, which by the way, is not right for everyone. We know that you, you have, to, it's a personalized thing that you must discuss with your own doctor. But for those who can take it, it's, it's, it is like, a, it's like magical in so many ways. It keeps your brain sharp. It keeps your heart healthy. It keeps your, you know, hot flashes. As I said earlier, we now know that hot flashes can contribute to serious health um, issues in the body. And this is, and of course, bone loss, major, major thing. Um, I, it's a regret. Uh, you know, we, we don't like to live with regret and I really have none, I have to say, but there's a little regret that I did not take HT because I do have low, low bone density. And I know too many studies now show how keeping your estrogen levels at a good level as long as possible is a is a real health benefit and i did not take ht my doctor at that time didn't recommend it to me and i just didn't know enough now i know so much more so it was one of those things if i knew then what i know now i definitely would have taken the ht i'm assuming i would have been a fine candidate for it so i do encourage women i'm not i'm not encouraging women to take ht I am encouraging women to never suffer because there's too many right. options out there now. And it doesn't have to be HT, by the way. But do have a conversation with a trusted doctor. And if your doctor, everybody listening, if your doctor is not giving you the time and attention that you deserve, you find another doctor. That's good. Oh, That's gosh, good. yeah. That's very good. Oh yeah, women, women's health and our symptoms and everything about women's health has been so sorely understudied, under-focused on and shoved under the rug for too long. And that's why, again, I applaud all of these people who are now very much in the menopause space, like Stacey London and a few other celebrities. And I'm you know, I always think, okay, yeah, what, how are they going to benefit from being in this? But the truth is they are raising the conversation. They're raising the level of the conversation about women's health and about menopause. Talking about it, talking about it. So you have a podcast where you talk about health issues. Tell folks about that and tell folks how they can learn more about you and, and the resources available to them through you. Thank you. Yes, it's Gruff Talk. Hello. How to Age Better podcast. It's on all the podcast, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, um, you know, the, the streaming platforms, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and so on, iHeart. And, um, and it's also on YouTube. And you can find uh, about my books and more about me and, and uh, research I've done and blah, 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 just by going to my website, barbarahannagrufferman.com. Well, you are just a wealth of knowledge. I think we could probably talk for days and still not get all of the information that you have to my audience and, and others, hopefully, that will be listening after they uh, to you after they see, see my show, because um, it's just been pure joy and delightful to have heard you speak in public and to have had conversations before this one today to learn about you. You're truly an inspiration. And I want to thank you for your time and for what you're doing to raise the bar for women to to just to know and and the issues that we're going through that they're, they're important and we need to be talking about them and we need to be giving women the information they need to feel good to be successful no matter what age they are in life and you're doing that so thank you so much thank you so much for having me on nicole i really appreciate it i really appreciate it thank you all right. Well, keep keep putting that information out there for us because I'm following you and I I want to I want to be as good as you are as I keep going through life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that will do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again. I hope you have a great day.